Kim Valley, she's for the Unrolls one, and this is Inside Exec. Today we're going to explore how you manage a team when you are perhaps a new manager to the team and they're all very highly qualified team members, all fabulous at the specific task that you need them to do, but all they're really interested in doing is the high profile, interesting work and that the boring day to day mundane activities are just not worthy of their time and as Fuliana said just before we went on air I didn't go to university for four years to learn how to photocopy so how do you manage that style of person and I think that perhaps we have all had those people in our teams over the years tell us well it's obviously something that because they knew because they excited because they feel very comfortable being successful at their degree and being selected by their chosen organization to work there they feeling important and they really think about somebody else it's better use of money that they keep working on the high profile and the important projects rather than do the menial tasks the key is well or sorry the people who've been working for a long time would know that actually it's never like that. It's always that every job you do, no matter at what level you are, you have parts of the job that are not glamorous, that they are not key. And no, you don't have an army of people to, to do the photocopying for you, to do proofreading, whatever it is. So at the end of the day, I think it is the manager's responsibility to guide them there without judgment and without criticism but to show them that a firstly the best thing is to do it by example i know one of the very senior guys i worked for he would be there doing the photocopying but he normally do it for his own he was head of marketing and he was doing it he was doing it after hours because that's the only time he could do it and he had staff and everything and um, chose to do it so when one of his direct reports faced this issue of new graduates, you know, not feeling like it, and says, oh, well, you might want to see that our head of division actually did his own for the presentation he did for you this morning. He worked on it late last night. It had to be ready for it this morning. And he did the packs, and they nearly died because they thought, no, he's doing it. That's not best use of his time. And so she asked him to talk to the team about why did he do that? Why didn't he give it to his PA or to a junior person? And the answer, and I remember it very clearly, saying, you just do your common sense, whatever is right at the time, and you do a complete job. I could have contacted or asked my PA to be here at 7 so I can have the packs ready by 8. But what's the point in that? I kept it to the last minute. I kept it to the last minute for a reason because I needed information that couldn't be done beforehand. So what you do is use common sense and what you've got to focus on is the product and the outcome, not the fact that I spent 10 minutes doing photocopying and somebody else didn't. I think it's it, perhaps for me a, a little bit more basic than that. I think it's about being responsible, individually responsible for your activities. And, and I think thrown into that in this situation is expectation. These people coming into an organisation and into your team, what is the expectation they have of the work that they're going to do? Did you sell them on the idea that they would be involved in all of these great projects only to find that when they get there they actually have to do other things as well? If you haven't been honest with them in terms of getting them into the organisation, then you've brought problems right from the start. And I think in one of our very early guests, John Eddy, talked about that in one of his sessions with us, about how you really have to be honest with people because that's the only way that they're going to be honest with you and give you everything that they've got of their talents. So they've come into the organisation, they're there, they're presenting you with this approach to their work, I think it is then up to us as the organisation to start to talk about individual responsibility and that everyone is re individually responsible for doing the best job they possibly can for the organisation. And that means everything that is related to their job. And I think back to a very long time ago when I went into a restaurant and I had a person waiting on the table who was probably the most outstanding host 
in a restaurant that I have ever been to. He was so proud of what he was doing and so in the moment of what he was doing that there was nothing that was too much trouble. He presented himself in a way that was the best possible way because it made him feel better to be totally committed to the job he was doing. And so he did, the outcome was that he did the best job he possibly could and that was good for everyone. It was good for him but it was really good for us. And we talked to him afterwards because it was so outstanding and we were interested in why we felt it was so outstanding because you don't get that. People generally in weight positions would feel that the job, that they're treading water, they're marking time until they go on to something in their eyes better than what they're doing. Any job you do, regardless of when you're doing it and what you're doing, you do to the best of your ability because it's the job you're doing at that time. And you don't know that the interaction that you have with anyone else in that position, regardless, is the only time that they will have that interaction with you or that interaction with your organisation. So you really need to make sure that every instance is the best possible instance it can be. And so it comes back to being responsible, responsible for yourself and for the actions that you take in any situation. So in a, in a work situation, I think that... We have to be encouraging people to be that kind of responsible individual that does everything that is possibly required of the job to get the outcome for the organisation. Well, that to me in an office situation will translate to the team leader, manager of that group. It's their job to be that mentor, to show them that it's they're fully accountable and how important one aspect of the work is, no matter how menial it is, it's part of it. One thing that some new managers do to start off with, thinking, oh, I don't want to lose them. If I give them these menial tasks, they'll go somewhere else and I just train them, etc., etc. And they start doing it themselves. So they do the boring bits and so on and so forth. And the answer to that is, well, that's a big mistake because they will leave mm-hmm. anyway and they think they can do the job better than you then. But at the end of the day, I think it's it's giving them all of it, not mm-hmm. just one part. Yes, give them the exciting project, but from start to finish. And what comes with that is research. What comes from that is rework. What comes from that is excitement. What comes from that is photocopying. So all of it. I think, too, that it, it comes to knowing what the rest of the team does and and what the rest of the team are responsible for and that if you don't have that understanding of of all of the jobs that that make up the team then you could sit there and assume that it was somebody's job to do the photocopying to do the collating to do to get this research or to prepare this presentation and that all my job is at the end of the day is to to make the presentation because it hasn't been explained to me what everyone else's tasks are and how they interrelate. And I think that laying that out for the team, whether you're the new supervisor or whether you've got new people in the team, is important so that everyone has the map to follow. We all need a road map, regardless of what we're doing. And if you haven't got that, then you do just drive around in circles. And another approach is to say to the, the intelligent young people as well, is to say to them, Look, really, if you had your own, if this was your own company and you were running it, would you have two, three people just booking conference rooms, doing the photocopying, etc.? Would that make sense? Would that be a way you would run your business? Would you find people that will just do that and will stay with you? So, again, treat them as you should, with respect, and as like if they were the CEO of their own company, how would they act? Appeal to their business thinking, appeal to not just their ego. For their ego, help them with that as well, so that they can meet other people and shine, and give them credit, but don't shy away from making them do all of it. Of course, you could always take a totally different approach. You could come at it from a totally different angle, and you could be... You could be very concerned about their social well-being and say, really, do they understand that the best of office romances start around the photocopier and that I'm you're stopping, really... I'm stopping, you're really, I'm stopping her there, I'm stopping. <laughs> you're really only thinking of their best interests and, and letting them be exposed to the social side of the organisation so that they don't have to worry about missing out on being on Facebook.
I, I just think it's a, a social responsibility. I, I think I'll just modify that by, by saying that... Now she didn't meet her husband at the photocopier. No, I've just modified that by saying it will be good to get to know other people in different areas and do the networking yes. and um, learn of what other people do in other areas. The romance is not on my agenda. But but actually, on, on a more serious note, I do think that, it, that there is an an opportunity for us to encourage the social side of the work activity and, and that's part of team building activity yeah, as well and and that if you look at these tasks as you know perhaps if the photocopying is an issue and we, mm. we seem to have dwelt on the photocopying probably because that was the big thing for us in our early days yeah. if there is a task that is an issue then perhaps it's a time for the team to get together and think about is there a need for us to pool all of our requirements for photocopying. So we're not all going off individually mm. photocopying 10 pages and then coming back for the, for the next thing. Is there a time or is there a, a system that we can implement so that photocopying does happen and it gets rotated around the group so that we know that in a simplistic way all the photocopying on Mondays is done by this person and if they're away it's done by this person. So on Tuesdays it's this or that if it's some other activity, so maybe it's that you need to get research from or results from a particular area, that that all happens on this day so that everybody knows and can plan around that activity. And again, it's about building up the team, building up the range and sharing of responsibilities within the team to make sure that the activities are done and they're done efficiently and that, that everyone feels that they've contributed in some way to the team achieving its, its goals. This sort of thinking will encourage innovation. So if you have people hating a certain task or process, we'll tell them to start thinking about how would they make that better. Oh, you know what the big one is? Yes. Washing up the coffee cup. And that's an issue across the board. It doesn't yeah. matter where yeah. you are, what level you are in the organisation yeah. or, or kitchen, what organisation yeah. it is. It's cleaning the kitchen and washing up the coffee cups. Rins rinsing, putting in the dishwasher is very mm. hard work for some. So if you look at innovation and you say, so back to the day when things were done manually, and you said, well, it takes me hours to do that, so okay, what would you do about it? Mm. Some who's very very good with spreadsheets will come up with a spreadsheet yeah. now you say okay so why is that oh that takes too long there is a computer program or if I can just talk to IT and tell them what we mm. want and this way it will save us a lot of time and repeat work or rekeying or whatever the case might be the solution it will be a new more innovative more efficient and that part will be a project of excitement and yes. credit in itself. That's probably the even better solution because these are the bright young things that are coming into the yeah. organisation. They may well know about software and sometimes free software or things that you've already got in your system yeah. that you're not utilising because you haven't had to use them in the past. And in this day and age, we really shouldn't be photocopying. There shouldn't be a need for photocopying. There are so many other ways that we can share documentation electronically through the cloud, whatever it is, and still bring it to meetings, still have it for presentations, still have it for, for and ways that you can edit or make notes on it without having to have a piece of paper. Hand it over to the team. Say, okay, you don't want to do the photocopying, you find a solution. You find, you find another way. This is, this is what we have to do. This is how we have to share the information. This is when we need it by. This is how it gets used when it is at that meeting or at that presentation, whatever it is, you, find, you come up with a way to resolve it. And in the meantime, we have to do it this way. So it gives them the task that they have mm. to do, it gives, them, it gives the task purpose because it's a means to an end. They want to not be doing something so they'll find the solution and it's time-driven because you, mm. they know that it's got to be done by a certain date because it needs to be done by that date. And you'll find... It'll happen sooner. The other thing is if we broaden the accessibility to resources and information beyond one's own team or division. If you're in a big organisation and it's an or even in a small organisation and you're in a different part of it, quickly you will find out by interacting with other people and giving credit where credit is due, who's good at a certain task. But that person then need to be recognised, helped, the go-to person for X because 
he, she can do this thing much faster, much better. They can improve it instantaneously. But then you've got to give back. You've got to be helping them with other things. Say, oh, have you got time or can you show me how to do that? And then you do something else. What that means is that we to utilizing resources across the whole organization and we're getting to work with people as true team members. And you're getting exposure to other mm. methods, other ways yeah. of doing things. And so it's that continuous improvement, that, that constant review of how things are being done and taking on all of the things that are going to make the task better, faster, more enjoyable. So as a manager looking after a young team like that who happen to be super intelligent, excellent at what they're doing, however they just want to do the key projects and the limelight. The good stuff. Uh, yeah, and I, I think just remember they're fully accountable but it's your job to mentor them and show them by example, experience and by direction. Uh, when I'm in direction, not ordering, I mean show them the path, show them the way. I think sometimes too it's a trap for people who have been in the supervisory role for a while and who continuously get new people. You know, they're, it's like the kindergarten teacher. They always stay kindergarten teachers because they're really good with kids who are starting school. And so you might be in a position where you're a really good team manager, team leader of people who are just starting out on their careers. And sometimes you can get tired of always having to go over this message again and again. But I think rather than get tired of it, what you should be recognising and celebrating for yourself is that, that you are the best person. The organisation sees you as the best person to introduce a new generation of people into the workforce because you do it well enough for the organisation that they trust you to continually do it for the organisation. And so that then becomes your responsibility to make every group the best group that you've put through from the start of their careers. And they will come back and thank you. And they will remember that when they started out, they had this yeah. person who showed them what to do. I worked with a florist for a long time who always talked about the very first job she had when she was training to be a florist. And this was 40 years later, she was still talking about it, it was the best thing to learn. She had to clean out the fridges at the florist shop with a toothbrush. Bleach and a toothbrush. <laughs> And we laugh at it and we think how funny that would be. But that stayed with her. She was yeah. horrified that she had to do it. But the bottom line was that florist shop was the most highly regarded florist in yeah. Sydney, I will say, at the time, because everyone knew that the flowers that came from that shop were the freshest, stayed the freshest. They didn't go rotten and mouldy in the water when you got them. That came back to the fact that those fridges were cleaned out every day so meticulously. Mm. And she understood that that was the case a few years later and she remembered that that was... and said that that was the best training she ever had on how to have her product at, at its optimum for her clientele. What I'm about to say might sound a bit harsh, but... If you're at a stage where you've done this uh, looking after new people to the organisation and stopped feeling the benefit of what Kim just said, I'm sorry, but I think it's time for you to look for something else mm. because it's not fair to you, it's not fair to them. But if you're in it, do it the way that you always, like in the past, like you've done it in the past and you've got the joy out of it as well as um, others had the benefit. Yeah, and if you are in, in that situation and you look at it honestly and you say, no, I can't do this anymore, it's still a time for celebration. You should always celebrate activities where you find that you can't do them anymore because you've made that decision. You haven't just lingered on and just gradually degraded and gone downhill. You've actually taken control taken the step to say, no, I'm not going to do this anymore. Thank you for that opportunity and I now move on to the next thing, something else that's going to give me a challenge. And be happy about the fact that you have made a decision that you can't give that activity its best anymore, your best anymore. You know what I meant. Yeah. I think we have covered that topic for you today quite well. I'm Kim Bailey, she's Fuliana Osborne and this is Inside Exec. Mm -hmm.